Okay, yes. Um, sorry about that. And uh, okay, let me see. Yes, okay. Okay, wonderful. So a, a fresh moment, each moment is a fresh moment, a moment of, of being, which is not in time. So if we can somehow get a sense of that. Of being without um, the past or the future. <clears throat> without uh, being somebody in particular. <clears throat> Which is uh, the freedom, the undefined, unconstrained, unrestricted presence. So in this moment, we, we relax into, into this presence, into effortless, effortlessness. Nothing special. And yet, how delightful it is being the delight of being. Not attempting to fix anything or to reach any special state, any special experience, all of that is, is impermanent and insignificant. That which doesn't come and go, that which is untouched by thoughts and the designs of the mind. <clears throat> It's not something that you perceive, not something that you conceive, but that which already is the reality of, of being, the reality of your experience. In this one reality, I am thou, and there's no distinction between the various waves within the ocean, the various notes in the symphony, they're all part of the same symphony, the same melody, the same, the same rhythm. <clears throat> Anything that you conceive of, you perceive, is your creation. You are the creator and the perceiver. But uh, you've never ever been something created.
the truth that resonates within you because you are the, the truth that resonates within itself that I am and that this I is non-phenomenal. the reality of consciousness. Which has no creator. No precedent. But in this moment, in every moment is the eternity of creation, the eternity of consciousness, not in time. So allow every cell of your being to resonate this understanding. Because you, you are this resonance. You are this understanding. You have left the cocoon, the belief that you are within a body-mind. past stories about a a so-called me. My life, my past. Past events in my life, my family. What is this me? In this moment of awareness of being, there is no me to be found anywhere. The me that is a subject of worries and concerns. The me that is unloved or lacking. Where is it? What is it? The sound bite. The reflection of the mind. Empty. 
Nothing there. My feelings. My determinations. My regrets. What is this? Me that we speak of. Nowhere to be found. It's not set of thoughts and images, and sensations. Do we need to continue to maintain an illusory story about some illusory character that I define myself to be? What for? Rather, this fresh moment of being, not knowing. This tender, fresh moment. Like the flapping of the wings of a butterfly. that is not coming from anywhere or going somewhere. And yet how awesome this mystery that is void of the me story and the sense of separation and so-called past traumas. Nothing that we hold on to in presence because there is in fact, nothing to hold on to and no, no body that is interested in holding on to, to what, what for? When you are this wholeness, this completeness, this totality, what's the point of uh, holding on to? bits and pieces that bind us. Not really. Nothing really bind us, binds us. It's our, our game, our play. We choose to be somebody in this moment, in spite of the complete absence of any me, 
somehow we conjure up, we exert ourselves to download the me with all its worries and concerns and somehow we choose this play while all along we are not a body, we're not defined, we're this intimacy, this transparency that knows it is, I know what I am. And that knows it is aware. I know what I am and I know what I am aware. This I is not a body, not a mind. This, this I is awareness itself. That is, one could say, made, made out of knowingness. And being. The mind may want to have an explanation of what does knowingness or being mean so that we have a, a narrative, a narrative that we can, as an imaginary separate character, file in our portfolio. imaginary portfolio for an imaginary separate me nowhere to be found so we we soak in this understanding which is our own our understanding about our reality, about truth, about the one reality. It has no name, no age, no gender. And it's pure presence, undivided, unlimited. The more we soak into it, the more it soaks into us as a way of speaking. Because in fact, we have never been anything else. Never will we ever be anything else. Because we do not exist in time. Awareness does not exist in time. So we meet every moment freshly, unknowingly, being astonished moment by moment, discovering moment by moment, unfolding. We are like a baby-like. unprejudiced, present. We are the, the presence.
and we dance, we dance together like the wind, like the sunshine, the one body, the universal being, universal body. We are never apart in, in truth, in fact, in reality. We are the celebration, the same celebration, in the celebration of being, of beauty, of love, mm -hmm. so wonderful. Okay, well, if you have any questions, anything that you would like to explore or discuss, please make sure to unmute your mic. You're welcome to turn on your video. Uh, any questions? Hello, Walter. Hello, Magdi. Thank you so much. That was beautiful as usual. It brings up um, many of your comments remind me of my ways of getting clarity on this understanding, which is poetry. And I have a short poem, if I might share it. Yes. And this, this speaks to what you're talking about, the freshness of the moment. Mm. It's called Remember My Heart. Forget about me whenever we part. No name, no face. Just remember my heart. When we meet again, each time a new start, always fresh yet familiar, I remember your heart. Beautiful. Thank you. Very beautiful. Thank you. One 
one heart. Yeah, beautiful, thank you. Yeah, that's what we truly love in each other, is the love itself. We enjoy the personality, the character, the <laughs> so many different ways in which the human character appears. But that which we love is always the same. We love the self within our children, within our friends, within our neighbors, within everybody. It's the self that we love. Consciousness. The heart. Yeah, beautiful poem. Thank you, Walter. And when, when we are happy, we are the heart. All the veils, you know, drop away in happiness. We are as our true self, this unveiled presence. The same, same presence. It's such a beautiful recognition. You know, in love, there is nothing lacking. So we are fulfilled. When the, as the love that we are, we are fulfilled. without any objects. There are no objects in this fulfillment. In fact, there are no objects, period. Love celebrates itself in relationships. through the feelings. But I think Ramana Maharshi said something to the effect that when the mind drops into the heart, then there is a celebration of the peace of being. It is the heart is primordial. When the mind recognizes the heart, drops into the heart and its function and its functioning has that the perfume of love and intelligence. Mm. 
but when the mind is still under the belief that consciousness is material, that the heart is a function It hasn't yet dropped into the heart. It still believes in a separate reality, a personal reality. Which separates me from you. It's uh, the play of consciousness. Because there are no problems in God's kingdom. We choose love because we love love. We recognize the sweetness, the innocence, the simplicity, the freedom that's inherent to, to love. And so we choose this moment, every moment if is available to us to choose. The heart and to invite the mind to drop into the heart. Because there is one reality. And that reality is not made out of matter. It's not made out of images and beliefs and thoughts and concepts. It's not made out of anything. One could say everything is made out of it, but it's not made out of anything. And we are this reality. The heart is this reality. We know it deep down in our hearts. <laughs> The heart knows. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Any questions? Hi, Maggie. Richard. Hello, Richard. Hi. Uh, and Walter, thank you for that poem, by the way. Mm, very beautiful, yes. Um, you, you had talked a little bit today about um, trauma. And it seems as if, like, when there's trauma, it really reinforces that sense of separation in, in, in people. Do you have any thoughts or just, well, yeah, I guess thoughts on just how to how to be with someone who has is dealing with trauma, and how to be with them while at the same time not trying to like reinforce that sense of separation that it brings. So yes, first, 
important to understand that trauma refers to a person. This is part of what, uh, how the ego gets formed, you know, via various uh, uh, experiences of trauma, various degrees of trauma, of course, you know, but, uh, this is how the sense of, of self, the, the psychological defense and offense mechanism, and avoidance mechanism, all these mechanisms develop uh, through uh, yeah. various you know conditions they relate to this is what we refer to as the person you know is we are sort of a, a bundle of, of trauma <laughs> in a way um, uh, but this is part of the process via which you know we develop a way of uh, somehow uh, relating in a multi-dimensional dimensional uh, realm, you know, existence, um, and uh, so, we, so we sort of develop a, a sense of ego, which uh, serves us to uh, sort of stabilize us, stabilizes us, uh, sort of a structure, egoic structure that allows us to sort of navigate our way uh, through a world that is, I would say like deeply aggressive and ignorant. Uh, but in time we realize that uh, it, it's, out, it, uh, it's outdated, the egoic model becomes outdated when we realize that it's, it doesn't produce happiness. It sort of, uh, it goes beyond its, its service. It became sort of uh, our identity rather than being a structure that we can use to navigate the world. It becomes that which we are, it becomes our identity. We become, uh, sort of caught in this, into this identity and we feel unhappy, we feel a lack of freedom and, and uh, we're haunted by our aspiration for freedom but not knowing how, how to navigate. Uh, so we, we, we do at some point, uh, in some cases, you know, find a way uh, to uh, the inquiry through the inquiry. Um, but what, what uh, sustain us, sustains us throughout the egoic phase is, is the love. When we, we feel a touch of love or act of compassion towards us, or even when we express um, acts of compassion to others, others or when we share love and uh, act, you know, act, acts of kindness, or non-egoic act, acts, you know, they're sort of little glimmers of light in our life that although we are still struggling and wrapped up in our egoic structure, these glimmers of light, these moments of, uh, of love and, and kindness and compassion touch us, you know, they sort of uh, maintain, maintain the glimmer of hope within, within us. So I think with people who are, um, experiencing, you know, difficult times or, or particular trauma, of course, uh, you know, there is the aspect, the practical aspect of trying to sort of get yourself, you know, in, in a safer place in case the trauma is ongoing right now to sort of find a way out of that, you know, leaving an unhappy relationship or abusive relationship or, um, but in terms of you know being with a friend, uh, of course, besides the practical aspect of helping them, is is to love them, is to be available to them, uh, to be available to them, not that, to teach them anything, not to be non dual, whatever you know, no, but to be just you know what we truly are, this, this loving friend. The, it's. Uh, it's a healing to know that there is somebody around that just there available to you in whichever way that is possible for, for them to be available to, to you, for you. 
Um, so by your uh, not getting uh, wrapped up into their trauma. Oh my goodness, what's happening to you? How could this happen to you? Blah, blah, blah. Not to play the, the, the tra tra trauma game. But I'm not talking about ignoring the trauma, no. I'm talking about not to uh, sort of um, reinforce in a way, you know, neither to downplay it and not, not saying that, no, no, but just to be present uh, freshly as, as the presence that we are. And it's important for you to understand that it's maybe difficult to swallow, but <clears throat> um, that there is no one who is traumatizing us. Somehow, it is the game that we are choosing to play right now as consciousness. All the players in, in your play are uh, acting via, via the force field. They're not separate independent actors with an independent free will. Their free will, your free will, my free will, is a, 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 is the free will of consciousness. So we know we have a free will, but it's not the free will of the mind. It is the free will of consciousness. So the uh, the mind recognizes its free will and says it's the free will of this separate self. But in fact, that's just a misinterpretation from the mind. So as a free, the freedom that we have, where this freedom, which is the freedom of consciousness, is never taken away from us because you cannot take away the freedom of consciousness from consciousness itself. We always have the freedom, the complete freedom of consciousness. Now we misunderstand what that means. We believe that this means that the freedom of consciousness is the freedom of the body-mind that the, the mind, body mind is free to do whatever it wants or is not free to do whatever it wants. I cannot jump 100 meters. I can only jump two meters. That's misunderstanding about what, what freedom of consciousness is. The freedom of consciousness is that, is that it's in this moment, it is the reality which creates, perceives, conceives, creates and perceives. There is no external force onto consciousness. That's for you to understand, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about uh, speaking in that manner to, to your friend, but to understand that you know, the, in fact, in truth and reality, it is a mirage. The, sense of separation is a mirage, it's, it's a hallucinogenic state. It's a, it's a local lo localization of the universal being. It's a certain spin, a spin, a local spin in the vastness of the universe. Within this local spin, the uh, uh, electromagnetic field is, is energized via the spin and results in certain uh, certain uh, energetic field of 
sensations, feelings, thoughts. It is, it is not separate from the entire cosmos. So there isn't, in fact, a, a, a particular problem anywhere. Uh, I'm just sharing that with you so you can contemplate that because when you are with somebody, you are meeting them where they're at, not where you're at. And, uh, but yet, although you are meeting them where they're at, where you are at matters. Because you are there with them as presence. And the, the piece of being within you, which arises from your understanding that there are no problems in the universe at all, there are no issues in the universe at all. That understanding is within you and is in a way uh, a part of the presence. It's part of what is being communicated, what is being shared. And uh, to a certain extent, the trauma is also a storyline that we carry on and we repeat to ourselves. Somehow, somehow we have decided that this is a major event in our life and we don't let it go. We, we, somehow repeat it, we weave it, we color it, we um, although although it's is completely absent in, in presence in being, it's not completely absent in the mind. The mind is uh, uh, keeps returning and defining myself def define me which is just the freedom and choice we're making in the moment uh, as being subject to the trauma as being of course a person you know a, a, a separate consciousness a separate self a, 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 the body mind somebody that uh, uh, and somehow there is some juice in that. The, the juice is the juice that we put in it. You know, we, we, the importance that we give it. The, the, the. So, but that's not how the universe is. The universe flows, you know, a river flows, the weather flows, uh, images flow, the wind, uh, the birds, you know, it's a, that's not how the universe is. It doesn't, Keep return doesn't return. I mean, the, the weather doesn't return to to you know the hurricane of two years ago. No, it, it's untouched. It's, it's 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 not how how reality is. It, there's no holding on in reality. But uh, we 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 do, and in a way, it could you know. At some point, at some point in time, maybe it served a function to uh, define yourself, you know, in a certain way. It served a function to gather uh, some help or to to uh, to get into a uh, build yourself a certain resistance. You know, I, I'm not saying that it's all bullshit. I'm just saying that it's. Uh, That there is, there is uh, a possibility of of freedom from trauma, not through so much the resolution of trauma. That's not what I'm talking about. Nor am I opposed to, you know, trauma trauma work or trauma psychological I work with trauma. Not at all. But from where I'm speaking from, from 
I'm talking about uh, the direct absolute freedom, going directly to the absolute freedoms, to the freedom from the past. And that's uh, a choice that we can exert, we can exercise. Yeah, it can be it can be difficult sometimes to to be sympathetic and listen and let the person know that, that they're heard without out also like kind of feeding into like the the narrative that they have too like mm -hmm. to respect to respect what they went through and respect their their story not in any way diminish it but also to to just listen and, and try to just to be a listener not an encourager yeah. does that make sense yeah, absolutely. Because they're just looking for a partner, a partner in crime, you know. <laughs> um, but that's not helpful, you know. It's it's not helpful me to be a partner in crime. Um, yeah. Um, and so it's possible that. When a friend doesn't find in you a partner that they'll reject you and look for somebody else that can, you know, play their tune. Uh, in listening, you don't need to be a partner. I mean, you don't need to sort of understand this. Like, of course, we are sympath sympathetic in that, you know, we we sense what they're sensing. You see. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're buying. We're, we're this doesn't mean we're taking the the tra the traumatized stand. You know, the, tra the um, traumatized stand. But we're at the same time we sense what they're sensing. It's a mirroring, a mirroring aspect of our relation to relationships. Uh, you, you, you can't agree to that which you cannot agree. It, 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 you cannot agree, go along to that which, you cannot go along with that to which you do not really agree. So, yeah, uh, but I, I understand that if you, there may be some temptation to, to go along even when we don't deeply agree or deeply resonate. But it's important not to. I'm not saying to disagree or take a different stand, but just not to, to remain as you are because, because it, it's, you're going against your understanding. You know. Yeah. And there are, rel there are rel ways of rel speaking that are relative, you know, you can, uh, you know, yes, I understand, but there is more to it than that, you know, relatively. Uh, yes, I understand that tra traumatized, but who isn't, you know, everybody's traumatized. Even the traumatizer, is traumatized. In, in a way, it said that uh, the, the, fear, the fearful people are to, most to be feared or something like that, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Magdi. I, I appreciate your insights and I'm, I'm going to keep on keeping on and just doing my best to, to listen and be a, a good friend. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. thank you for your, for your thoughts. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions?
Holger. Yes, hello, Magdi. Hey, Holger. I just remember that before I had this understanding about consciousness and my own person, um, I had the tendency to feel sorry for other people and was falsely believing that this is love, just to listen to someone and to try to comfort them. And I don't really know how to say this, but um, I mean, not to comfort them just on the personal level, but to just, um, I don't know, I'm lacking the words right now, but I just wanted to say thank you for this wonderful meditation and being here. And it's, feels like a big energy transmission or something. Yes. I mean, in a way, Holger, I mean, we share the same experience of uh, confusion and loss and misery and uh, chaos in the in the in the world in the mind in our society in our culture we so at that there is a level of our experience where This is sorrow. It's a, a certain sorrow about how we are living and how we are relating. But it's important to to not give it uh, an. Uh, and undo reality, not to give it uh, more uh, validity or ver veracity than what it has. It is simply a show. It is a show. If you look in your experience, and your experience is not different from anybody else's experience, you are the reality which perceives. And your experience is, is true to you like everybody's experience is true to themselves. There's one truth, one reality. In your experience, you are viewing. You view. You perceive, and you can also, which we all are familiar with, perceive unhappiness. But how do you perceive unhappiness? You perceive unhappiness by tasting it. You have to have a taste of it. You, if you look at an orange, you don't know what it is. You cannot say it's an orange. You, you even know what you can say the word orange, but it means nothing because you haven't tasted the orange. You perceive unhappiness because you have tasted it. How do you taste unhappiness? You only taste unhappiness upon the belief and the feeling that you are separate. Me, oh my God, what's gonna happen to me? The sense of separation, the past, the future, anxiety, worry, fear, about what? About me. This is how we experience unhappiness. And where is this me? What is this me? Nowhere to be found. And yet we do experience unhappiness. So therefore, if it's nowhere to be found, if there's no reality to in me, it must be our game. It must be what we are choosing to play 
as what? As consciousness, because this is what we are. So unhappiness is a choice. Why would consciousness choose unhappiness? Well, it's free to, and it enjoys the show, but it does not suffer. We go to the movies, we watch the Battle of the Bulge or whatever we watch, you know, uh, drama, he loved him, and then he loved her, and then she loved his neighbor, whatever, you know, we, we watch these things. <laughs> You know, we like the suspense, we like, but we are not suffering. We view the suffering. So there is a level. So when you're feeling the sorrow for the world, for it's like you're sitting in the theater, you're feeling sorry that she fell in love with Jimmy and not with Joey. <laughs> Because this is how you, you, you want her to love Joey instead of Jimmy. <laughs> you free them. Of course, look, you like, you like Joey more than Jimmy. And, and my own unhappiness of believing I would need to change a certain way. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but I spent so many calories in this uh, attempt and just to drop it, forget about it. But I want to make a correction. I said good luck with that, but I, I should take it back. I suppose too quickly. If you really want to change it, then you have to understand it, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. and why you don't understand it? Because you are the, the captain. You are you are the you are the reality. You're the only reality. So you need to understand it, so you don't. You know, you can play the game of wanting to change it, but without suffering. But why you don't understand it? Because you are only one, it's because you're choosing not to, not to understand it right now. You're not, you don't want to understand it, okay. I don't understand this, but it's... Okay. Yeah. So, you are perceiving the show, but the show, refers to its reality, the reality of the show, the reality of this perception, the reality of these sound waves that you're hearing, is the reality which perceives them. The reality of that which is perceived is the reality which perceives it. That which is perceived is perceived by its reality. The reality of that which is perceived is the reality which perceives, yes? yes. The reality of consciousness. There is one consciousness, one reality. So that one reality is absolute and is choosing to prefer that Mary loves Joey instead of Jenny. And that same reality, that same reality, which is, which is choosing that to wish that Mary would love Joey rather than Jimmy is also creating the movie, is also putting together the play, the movie where, where Mary is going to, in fact, love Jimmy, marry Jimmy, and not Joey. You, you yeah. follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're choosing the play, and you're choosing whatever preferences, what, whatever, you, whatever you're wishing for the play to be different. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely the good guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's not in question. That's that, that is not that was not in question at all. <laughs> but the thing to understand is that there is one chooser, yeah. and it's always the choice is always what is being chosen right now. Yes. 
Wow. And it's not, it's not unfolding in time because consciousness does not exist in time. So given that it does not exist in time, it does not unfold in time. The time of consciousness is the eternity of now. We never experienced one second before, and we never experienced one second after, right? It's always now. Yes? It's always now. Yes. Yes? So whatever is unfolding, which is whatever is being created and experienced, is not in time. It's an in this instantaneous creation and consumption. The consumption being the perceiving and the dissolving. Instantaneously, the creation and the consumption are there isn't like a 0 0.4 seconds later. There isn't like the creation and then they lived ever ha happily ever after. So your experience in fact is not in time. Time is a mind impression that is connected to the process of thinking and locating, locating events, locating events, locating an image in relation to another image. When I was 10 years old and when I was 30 years old. So the time is the distance between those two images the 30 years between, or 20 years between those two images. But those two images, those thoughts of arising, they arise in the same space. Arise in the same space, which is consciousness. See, like, like the distance between two objects. You have to locate object A and object B whether in your mind space or in your visual field. Those two objects and the distance between them, they're arising in the same space, in the same space. So space or distance is a concept. I'm not against it, I'm just saying it's, it serves a purpose, but it's a, it's a, it's a concept. It doesn't refer to an actual, actual distance between objects. It's metaphoric. I'm talking about our experience. I'm not talking about our belief systems or I'm not talking about, I'm not opposed to the usefulness of miles and kilometers and meters, and I'm not opposed to that, those concepts and their functionality. What is a good way to detect belief? It's, it's not always verifiable. You can always verify consciousness. You always ask yourself, am I aware? Am I? It's not always very ver verifiable. Hmm. Now, there are 
other things that are not always ver verifiable due to circumstances. You cannot always uh, verify that your car is in the garage because of the circumstances. Maybe you, maybe you parked your car on the street. So that's also, you know, not verifiable that that is my car in the garage. It's not always verifiable, but it's in the it's in the street. Uh, now, do I own a car? It, that also is is verifiable, but it's not always verifiable because uh, if you sell your car or if you know, you transfer a title of your car in your wife's name, then you no longer own the car. So the belief that you own the car, even that is a belief, but it's a belief about phenomena. So there are beliefs about phenomena. Now you could say like, you know, gravity, for example, it's not a belief, it's a fact. Which is true because as far as we can verify, no object flies out in space, you know, without propulsion. So we can say that, okay, gravity is not a belief. It's, it's very verifiable. Hmm. Do all orange trees bear fruit? Most often, you know. That's not a belief, you know, but it's, it's not 100% verifiable, but within a certain caveat of flexibility, yes, it's, it's verifiable. Am I? It's always verifiable. Am I, am I a man? It's not always verifiable. Because if you are, for example, uh, I hypnotize you, or, or you go to a hypnotist, he hypnotizes you, tells you that you are a 16 year old child. A 16 year old girl. Then, when you double check, you find, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a 16 year old girl. You cannot verify it, but you are. And in your dreams, you, you, you cannot verify that you are a man. You could be a butterfly. Well, you could say, well, that's in my dreams, it's not real. Well, you know, we dream uh, six hours a day. What, do you want to take a scissor and cut out of your life? You know, how can you disregard this, this aspect of your life? You can't, it's, it's part of your experience. In deep sleep, it's unverifiable unver that you are uh, a father. So, so the, to say that I'm a man or I'm a father is a belief. But we're okay with that belief. I'm not saying let's drop it. I'm saying, you know, it's okay. There are some conventional beliefs, or some conventional lingo, some conventional uh, uh, system of communication and definition that we have adopted. But because we are talking about truth, I'm taking the conversation somewhere else. So consciousness is always verifiable. But the belief that consciousness is born is not verifiable. How could you, what, how could you uh, verify that? Or the belief that uh, consciousness arises out of the brain.
so the belief uh, uh, require uh, you looking into it to verify that's is that true or not if it's true it has to be always true then it's not a belief So, I mean, if you take a close look, you know, you will find that there is an entire realm of beliefs uh, that uh, function in our life. And they serve a purpose. But there, is, there are some beliefs that don't serve a purpose, in particular, the belief that consciousness is personal and limited that I'm a person, that I exist in time and space, that I live in a cocoon of history and that, that I exist in time. This, this sort of belief, the belief that I'm a, a person, a man, a woman, and a son, a father, a daughter, a mother, that you have to go into, your, into, into some sort of trip, mental trip to sort of find some validation to that in some la la lands out of a type of place because it's, it's not it's not in fact verifiable that you which is the reality of consciousness that which perceives is only one eye is is born or is male or female or tall or short and and, it's, and you always validate and if you go to your own experience in this moment every moment you will find that it's, it's, it's absurd that your experience is very clear that the reality which perceives is not perceived. It's therefore cannot be uh, comprehended phenomenally or described phenomenally. It cannot be uh, Does not have a quality, phenomenal qualities, but yet it's it's undeniable. Awareness is undeniable. This is a core belief. This is really all we need to be concerned about in terms of our non-dual Advaita and our understanding of Advaita, and and to live that understanding in in each moment, in this moment, and to sort of go to this. Live, living understanding, to live the understanding that I am this transparent presence. So you have to, uh, once you comprehend that, you, that the belief that consciousness is mortal and limited and personal, once you comprehend that this belief has no validation, then you have to live according to the, your new understanding. You have to live as I consciousness, not I Magdi or Holder, or that I, not I as person, but I as consciousness. There's a new exploration because we've been living as I Magdi and blah, blah for so long. But it's a new exploration. So we, we say, okay, fine, you know, how do I live that now? How do I live that now? In this moment, how do I live that now? I, I don't know. It's good. You don't know, it's good. Okay, we don't know. If you don't know, you're open. If you don't know, you're and it, open. And it's definitely not a replacement of one belief with another belief. Oh, no, absolutely not. No, no. No, 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 because it's not, it has to be the understanding first that yes, I is the reality it's perceives. And that's not an object, it's not objective. Absolutely. Yeah. And that there is one reality. So, so, so I is this reality. Yes. yes, not a new belief, no. But what may seem like a new belief is how we start to live it, you know, to, to, because the tendency is to live as a person, you know. So initially, it may feel like you're trying in a new pair of shoes, you know, you have to break in the new shoes. They're the right size, but still this is, you're used to wearing your slippers, right? 
you can't dance with them right away. <laughs> you need to break them in. Yeah, so there may be an initial phrase like that, but that's okay. And it's not a problem to fall back into the old pattern because there are no problems. You know, it's not there are no problems. It's okay. So what? It's always a fresh moment. This moment is always brand new. Brand freaking new, I mean, it's completely brand new. Not like, oh, well, you know, here's another one. You know, it's a new moment, but it's like, like, like the one before, but it's, you know, new because the other one is gone. No, I'm th- it's freshly, new, sparkling, diamond-like new. Thank you, Mac. You're wonderful. All right, hold <laughs> Okay, well, so it is time, so thank you all. <laughs> Lovely to be with you, Patrick, nice to see you, Trish, hey Trish, Olga, Richard, Zoe, hey Zoe, Walter, Karim, Holly, Little Holly, George, Kelly, Marga, Marga, Lucas, Jenny, hello Jenny, Grace, George, John, Salushiva, and D. Hello, Dee. Thank you all. Lovely to be with you. Be well.